Hi, I'm Martin from Multipipe, and today you're gonna to talk through how to pressure test this newly installed underfloor heating system. Now, if you'd watched one of our early videos, we showed you how to fill the loops individually, uh, one by one, using uh, a water, press, uh, water tester. This time, we're gonna now pressure test the system using this hydraulic tester. And, and in our previous video, it finished off by capturing mains pressure in the underfloor heating circuits. And to see what that mains pressure is, we're gonna attach then this uh, little pressure gauge here and attach it to the return port of the manifold. It's got a three quarter BSP thread here. So what we're gonna do is just remove the cap on here, finger tight to screw on the, the gauge so we can see what's happening with pressure. Once you've done that, we're just gonna use the key to operate the little fill and vent port underneath And this is confirming to me then, we've got just under probably about three bar of pressure currently sitting on our uh, underfloor heating system after we filled the system previously. Now we always suggest you recommend and that you uh, pressure test the system anywhere between four to six bar. So we're slightly below that, so we need this pressure tester to achieve this. And we're gonna attach this pressure tester to the top port, the flow port, the manifold. Um, and then we're gonna pump a little bit more pressure. We'll get the reading on our gauge here and make sure uh, we are testing anywhere between four to six bar. So first thing to do then is just with our reservoir filled with water, we're just gonna prime the reservoir, prime the, the loop, make sure we get all the air out. Once we're happy with that, we're just gonna attach this loop then to the top port of the manifold. Same sort of procedure, use the key to open up the fill and vent port. Just gonna nip that up with a spanner. Drop a key off. And open up the fill and vent port. Now it's worth checking from last time that all the flow meters are fully open. Just check those off, to drop the caps off. And they are. And all these actuator ports are all open as well. We've got the isolation, isolation valves closed off. So we're ready to go. So what we're gonna do then is introduce a higher pressure into the system now. Like I said, anywhere between four and six bar is what we're trying to achieve. Now depending on the pipe you've used, there's some MLCP that's been installed here, but some pipes will give you a little bit of fluctuation. So what you want is stabilization of pressure really. So once you've got to your target pressure and it's stabilized on your gauge, then we're happy then and I can see on here we're up to about five and a half bar. We're happy then just to close off this port here and we can disconnect our pressure tester. So we just go back to our pressure gauge, make sure we've got stabilized pressure here. We're reading now about five bar, so I'm happy with that. And we need to give that a minimum of a one hour test. And we really, we're looking for no drop in that one hour period. So depending on how if your pipe work is exposed to sunlight, sometimes you can get a fluctuation or even an increase in pressure. But we're looking for a pressure test of a minimum of one hour. Once you've completed that, then we can drop the pressure down to normal working pressure. So we've come back to this installation now. It's been just over an hour and I'm pleased to say that we're, we're good with pressure. We've maintained and held our pressure, which I'd expect anyway, realistically. So all we need to do now is just depressurize the manifold and leave it under what I would call working pressure. So around about one and a half to two bar would be fine. And to do that, we're just gonna reattach our pressure tester onto the top port of the manifold. Open up the fill and vent port. And we'll drop this down to around about two bar pressure. Now to do that, we're just gonna open the, um, the port on the pressure tester and it will just drop it down then. We'll hear the water going in. And we've dropped it down now to about two, part, two bar pressure. And it's important to have that pipe work pressure under pressure while it's being screeded. 
So once we've done that, we can disconnect our pressure tester. Now I personally like to leave the pressure gauge on the manifold just to see what's happening. You can see it's stabilized at two bar there, left under pressure prior to it being screeded. Now I'd always recommend a wet pressure test, but there are times of year where air pressure test might be a requirement. And it's normally when you've got a, a, a worry or a concern of frost, the building might not be airtight, so you've got issues where frost can be danger or damage to pipe. Now air pressure testing is available, it's almost exactly the same, but you're using an airline now to pressure test the system rather than, um, rather than water. The big difference is, when we come to air pressure testing the system, we're now looking at much lower pressure. So we're looking at no more really than one bar pressure. Air is far more searching, you can compress air, and it's actually more dangerous. So uh, maximum really one bar pressure for air pressure testing, but given the choice, wet pressure test every time, it's far more higher pressures, far better for ballast for the pipe, and it's far better for the screening company as well. So uh, thanks for watching, all the best.